Damar Langford and the Eagles here in Purcell Pavilion. And the Joyce Center. The Irish and the Eagles. A hearty star to watch for this game today is Quinton Post, big man in the middle for PC, Mike. He's had a terrific run and uh, still not in top shape. Had a broken foot earlier in the year, but uh, those last two games, averaging 13 and a half, had 17 against Armando Baycott down in North Carolina on Tuesday. He was 7 of 11 from the floor and the close loss for BC on Tuesday at North Carolina, 72-64. For Notre Dame, coming off a home loss on Tuesday, that against Florida State, 84-71. BC traveling maroon. Notre Dame in the home white, blue and gold. Boston College is 8-11 on the season, 2-6 in conference play. One of those ACC wins in early January at home against Notre Dame. Post, too strong. Yeah, not bad, though. I mean, he's able to go with both hands inside, uh, was able to face up. Look for Notre Dame to double him when they can this afternoon. Leshevsky on the drive. Post was there to block it. Nice idea by Leshevsky. Tried to make him guard, defend side to side, but uh, Post made a nice defensive play. Here's a look at our Toyota starting lineups. Visit your local Toyota dealer today. Makai Ashton Lankford is the leading scorer for BC, but Post has the first bucket. Well, you know, you got to choose something. He only made two coming into this game on the season. <laughs> Good start for Post. How about Boston Good. College after going 0 for 6, Mike, for the first time, not making a three in a game since 2009 at North Carolina? Well, Earl Grant tolls for the game. His number, he'd like to see 14 or 15 attempts uh, in the course of a the game. They only had six against North Carolina. But not a bad start. Hammond does not get the soft bounce here at Purcell Pavilion. Inside the Joyce Center. Fighting Irish are nine and four at home this season. All of their victories have come on this floor. Boston College in search of the first road win this year for the Eagles. Ashton Langford misses out of the corner post. The one-handed rebound and a foul is called against Notre Dame. Time to take a look at our Ford keys to the game. They're brought to you by your local Ford dealer with Mike Jaminski. Well, and this is Boston College. They want to try to get into the paint. They want to win the free throw line battle and try to force Notre Dame to defend. And for the Irish, match the physicality up front, uh, especially in the defensive glass. Wow, a second three for Post. Extending the range. How about Quentin Post, the senior from Amsterdam in the Netherlands? I think we have to readjust the scouting report here early. As you mentioned, Mike, he was just two of eight on the season. Now, granted, he's missed 13 games with a foot injury. All right, All right we're going to have our centers in a three-point shooting contest here today, Tom. Here we go with Leszewski. Now, the Irish fire away with threes. They have six players on the team with 20 or more made three-pointers. And Boston College does not have one on the roster for the year. The post is zeroing in on it this game. Good defense. Ryan brings it up after the steal. Starling puts it on the floor. Bounces out. Goodwin had a chance. BC comes away with it. Foul coming up against the Irish on the drive by Elite Bay. Marcus Hammond is going to get that foul call. And uh, Earl Grant on the sidelines for Boston College. I really like Elite Bay. I, I think they've got a, a real a gem in him. They really want to try to make him work inside out if he can. And he was very aggressive on that drive. Just 56% of the season from the free throw line for Prince Aligbe, the freshman from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Mike Bray on that Notre Dame bench. This will be his final season. He said uh, the program's ready for a new voice. And, uh, you know, he said he was thinking about it last year on the way back from the NCAAs. But uh, he had a 
a group of six grad students coming back and uh, decided to stick out one more year, but uh, felt like the, the rumors and stuff were, uh, it might have been a distraction. So he got that decision made this week. 481 wins as the head coach of the Irish. That's the most in school history. And 580 for his career. Also the head coach of Delaware. Good win the turnaround. Well, Goodwin's been so reliable. Seven straight games, double figures. He didn't play well. Uh, he played okay at BC, but uh, very reliable. And this is what you'll see from Notre Dame. They're going to play zone today. They really want to try to save uh, Leshevsky as much as they can. Zachary back to collect it for BC. Post, who's made a couple of threes already. That's a tough pass to a league bay who's able to get it. Deflected around, shot clock's inside of 10. Post, again! Wait a minute. <laughs> What's, it's supposed to be the luck of the Irish, right? Uh, <laughs> that's some performance early on by Quentin Post. At the other end, tipped up and in by Ryan. So BC attempted six threes, made none of them against North Carolina. They've already attempted four in this game, Mike, and they've made three of them all from post. Zachary in the lane had it knocked away by Leshevsky. Who is this number 12 in a BC uniform, Mike? Quentin Post. Serious heat check for the big man, his third three of the game. College. Well, we talked about Quinton Post had two of seven from three coming on in, but he is perfect from the floor. Three of three, Tom Wormy, and, uh, and he looks like he was ready to shoot, too. I mean, there was no hesitation in those threes. And, uh, you know, we talked about Notre Dame. This is a team that in BC that you would like the zone and make them prove themselves, but uh, that may change for the Eagles. This is a game, I mean, for Earl Grant, that he would prefer it to be in the 60s. Uh, you know, if it gets to be much more than that, um, you know, this team just doesn't have the offense to keep up with it. But it's a Notre Dame team that doesn't like to play at great pace. Uh, but, you know, the thing they have to do is, is the match or, you know, they, they definitely have to win the three-point battle in this game. Tamar Langford and his brother, Makai Ashton Langford. In the lineup for BC, Bickerstaff has come in. Wirtz, who just came in, forced a turnover. Irish a miss out of the corner and Boston College able to grab it as Starling misfires. One thing uh, Notre Dame doesn't do is offensive rebounds. So if they're not shooting, they're only going to get one shot. That's Lankford trying to hang. Post the cleanup duty. He really brings a great element. Earl Grant told us that, you know, with him coming back, they had to tweak their offense. They were used to playing with him. And then you put a, a post guy out there, it, it changes things. But uh, he he continues to play like this, they're going to be very, very tough. Six straight games for post, double-digit scoring, trying to defend Leshevsky. What a shot as he took it right to post. Post had to block on the first drive, but uh, Leshevsky continuing to try to put pressures. And we mentioned he fouled out in the game down in North Carolina on Tuesday. Ashton Langford, the jumper. So his first points, he was shut out in the first half on Tuesday against Boston College as their leading scorer for the Eagles this season. Leshevsky is looking to make his second three of the first half. Zachary runs it up. And he's a guy who actually can do both. He can pick and pop or roll to the basket. Ill-advised pass from Zachary, tried to go behind the back and then Post committed the foul. Those are the ones, you know, especially on the road, that it was just a casual pass uh, that, that leads to a turnover, and you pick up a foul, and uh, boy, six and a half minutes into the game, and he's in double figures already with four rebounds. So the 11 points for Post, just below his season average of 
per game to go along with five rebounds per game. He is a spectator now on that BC bench. So Lubin came in for Notre Dame as well, number two in white. This is good one in traffic, trying to back it down on Zachary. And the turnaround. Yeah, Dane Goodwin, does, he's got a size advantage in there, and uh, look for them to run their guards in on the post. Mike, how about his 146th game playing for the Irish? That's a school record That's for two, Dane Goodwin. That's two careers for a lot of people. <laughs> and he plays a lot of minutes. He leads the league in minutes. Yep. Long rebound to Hammond. He's one on four. Goodwin provides some reinforcement. Nice job, BC, getting back, cutting off that break, and they shut off Goodwin, who had spotted up for a three. Madsen had just come in for Boston College and committed the foul to his surprise. Dane Goodwin, the graduate student from Upper Arlington, Ohio. And then Madsen, he's really the BC three point shooter, although he was limited against North Carolina. That game went right down to the last three minutes. Earl Grant said they had the tempo going their way all of the game except for the last three minutes when North Carolina distanced itself from the hard-fighting Eagles. Leshevsky. Leshevsky now with eight in his second three of the game. And, you know, he's been up and down scoring-wise, which is surprising to me. Tom. Only uh, six double-figure games in the last 13. His three-pointer has tied us. And the Irish able to produce a turnover. Good one. Trying to fight his way through the lane and lost it. Potential three-on-one Boston College. Madsen back to Zachary. Really nice break. And that's, you know, the turnovers happen out front like that. They're easy to convert into points, but that was good passing between the two. Jaden Zachary, who is a double-digit scorer for this BC team, almost 11 points per game. Had 18 points against Notre Dame. And the home effort for BC. Lubin at the other end for the Irish. And, you know, not a big-time scorer. Most of their scoring comes from their starting five, so any offense they get from him is a bonus, but that was a good move. He got nice, deep position in the post. Lubin, the freshman from Orlando, Florida. Irish have made their last three field goal attempts. And now the zone, somebody else is going to have to step up and make shots. Ashton Langford with a miss. The designated three-point shooter, Quentin Post, is yeah. not in the game. I feel like he will be very soon after this rest. Tied at 16. Goodwin cut off by the defending of Madsen. Hammond, the lefty, lines up a three ball for the Irish. Well, here's the problem. They had a double. They felt like they came and doubled Goodwin down in the post. The guy who left them leaves the shooter wide open. First lead today for Notre Dame. Bickerstaff had it knocked away on the baseline and kept alive. Good hands by Goodwin defensively. Not a shot blocker, per se, out there for Notre Dame. Works. Hammond looking for another three. This one off the mark. Lubin grabs it. Hammond's the cutter. Basket and offensive foul against the Irish. Hammond on the move. BC had position. So we'll take a timeout here in South Bend. Hammond on the move. Makai Ashton Lankford had the position for BC. Left after one year. They didn't even ask anybody else. They called Mike up, said, you want the job? He took it, and here we are 23 years later. Bigger Phelps took this program to the Final Four back in 78. It seems to me huh. there's another team there from the ACC at the time. Led by Mike Jaminski back in 1978 at the Final Four and in the national title game, Mike. Yeah, Duke had a, a good result against Notre Dame that year, but not so much against Kentucky. G-Man played pretty well from what I hear. <laughs> that close to that national title back in 78. Leshevsky lets it fly. Well, I tell you, both centers now, you expect that from Leshevsky coming into this game. Uh, 
Quinton Post uh, has proved himself so far. Let's see if he starts to work closer with the basket. But uh, certainly the start that uh, Nate Leshevsky wanted. That's now an 8-0 run over the last two minutes and change for the Irish, shooting 53% as a team. And they've got in this zone, they've got Leshevsky out on the wing, Lubin inside battling with Post. Madsen tees one up for the Eagles. Well, this, this just a completely different scoring game from the one we saw on Tuesday. So now Madsen with that three, he's got 20 made threes on the season. And he leads the team in that category. Madsen didn't even attempt a three-pointer against North Carolina on Tuesday. He didn't score a point. That's a turnover. A league bay the other way for BC. Got it back, trying to make his move at the free throw line. Post is back in, tried to go over the top, and poor Mac Ryan pulled it in. Ryan got the defender in the air too strong. You see, I mean, Post had an effect on that, and Ryan just, he got it up there on the backboard a little. He was hurried in that shot, and uh, that's, you know, what a seven-footer does to you when he's right in front of you. Irish have already turned it over five times today. Post makes the move to the rim. Very impressed with him. Uh, you know, here's a guy that now he's settling back into what he does, but he's uh, in the back of his mind. He knows when needed, he can step out behind the three-point line. And again, for Post, just his seventh game of the season, missed 13 games to start the year with a foot injury. Goodwin, the pirouette. So good. Now, as opposed to Ryan on the last play, he pivots and fades away in the lane, and he's made that shot a couple of times. Goodwin averages just over 12 points per game for the Irish, who only turned it over seven total times in the previous two games, and that includes the loss here on their home floor against Florida State on Tuesday, where they shot just 39%. Leshevsky way behind the line. Now, uh, what we call the zone because uh, Lyshevsky isn't even hesitating <laughs> in pulling the trigger right there. This is just an incredible shooting performance by both teams. Lyshevsky has four made threes in the game, Mike. That puts him at 210 for his Notre Dame career three-pointers. Madsen can't answer with a three of his own. Irish have lost five of their last six games. The last win was January 10th. That was at home against Georgia Tech, and it took overtime and a 9-2 run at the end of regulation to force OT for the Irish and get the win against the Jackets. Madsen, quick release. They did a nice job coming in and helping out on the glass. And, you know, I'm gonna, it's going to be curious to watch this Notre Dame team post Coach Bray's decision. Leshefsky again. Don't take your eyes off him. No, no I just, I, 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 that forces Earl Grant's hand for a timeout. That is five threes in the game. He's only too shy of his career high for threes made in a game. Leshevsky wants it, and he absolutely rips the ropes for the Irish here in the first half. From Nate Leshevsky, G-Man, he's already knocked down five of them in the first half. Yeah, I mean, he's, you know, 38% on the year, like you said, he's a guy who has proven himself capable, but he came out, knocked down a shot early, and really has been an incredible rhythm uh, throughout this first half, not even hesitating to pull the trigger. And how about this, Tom? The centers in this game have combined for 30 of the 51 <laughs> points, and they have eight made threes between them. Simply amazing, and that's after Leshevsky had struggled at Boston College in early January. He missed all five of his three-point attempts in the loss to the Eagles earlier this season. Langford brothers have only combined for two points so far, one of six shooting. Here's Makai Ashton Langford down the lane, doesn't get the bounce, 
post, trying to out jump everybody, and Bickerstaff ends up with it for BC. Ashton Langford for three, and he knocks it down. Let's see as this game unfolds if the offensive glass becomes a you know a big weapon for BC. They get the possessions recycle that time, and a good look at a three. So Makai Ashton Langford he shoots 24 percent from beyond the arc. This is Madsen with the steal and jam. It almost looked like he was wearing a white jersey. I mean, that pass was basically right to him out front. That's as easy a layup as you're going to get in the game. Mason Madsen is the transfer from Cincinnati into the BC program. That goes out of bounds on the baseline. Words couldn't catch up with it, and it's back to the Eagles. This is a Notre Dame team that prides itself on taking care of the basketball. They usually don't turn it over and they don't make unforced errors. But uh, already seven in this game, about near where they would average for a game. And that equals their total from the previous two games as far as turnovers are concerned. Madsen lining up a three. Kind of strange things happening this afternoon, Tom. <laughs> this is just the first half. Ryan wants it. Post the rebound. Ashton Langford running and too strong. He's way out of control that time. Starling trying to maintain control at the other end finds Hammond. Lubin into the lane. Second chance. Basket and foul. Then Alan Lubin. Determination and second effort for the Irish. He earns himself the bucket and a free throw. Ended the series in ACC play, leading 15 to 4, but BC has won three of the last four meetings between the teams, including this season in early January. Lubin can't finish off the old school three point play that was the first free throw attempted by the Irish in this half. Another three for Boston College. Ashton Langford teeing it up. And uh, interesting now, too, with uh, a couple minutes left and uh, post out of the ball game, somebody else stepping up and knocking down a three. So BC has now made six three-pointers. They are last in the conference by percentage from beyond the arc at 27%, but not today. Six of 10 for the Eagles. Irish not too bad either. They're six of 11. Now six of 12. Missed by Starling. Ashton Langford teeing up another one. Two threes in a row. That was a ball set up by Jaden Zachary. Good push up the floor, pulled the defense in, and Langford uh, just followed in behind him. Foul called on the play. Jamie Lucky, A.J. Desai, Jamel Spearman are our officials. Watch this and push up the floor. He drives the defense down, and uh, Langford able to catch it in rhythm. I think from, you know, percentage and total-wise, that uh, this is where Earl Grant would like his team for the game. I was just thinking he would have preferred maybe a few of these threes in the game against North Carolina. <laughs> the outcome might have been different. They've lost 15 of the last 16 against the Irish. Angular rebound, and it is run down in the corner there by McLaughlin. Bickerstaff determined to get to the rim, and he spins it off the square. Yeah, say, but you know, with Ben Lubin in there, that uh, you can go attack the basket a little bit, not worry about a shot blocker. The only thing you have to worry about is uh, charges, but good, strong take. DC is working on an 8-0 run over the last minute and a half, and Bickerstaff, his first basket of the game. Hammond dribbling in tight quarters, trying to wrestle it away from the Eagles and find Goodwin. Lubin weak side, back up and in, and he got fouled again. You know, Tom, Mike Ray talked to us today, and, uh, you know, Lubin got hurt toward the end of that BC game, and was, they really needed him. Uh, his absence was really felt, but uh, 
He's been a presence here early in this game on the glass. So Lubin back to the free throw line. And he gives the Irish the lead, 35-34. Ian Lefeski, 24 of the 35 points for the Irish. At the other end for BC, Ashton Lankford and Post are the leading scorers. Post with 13. Ashton Lankford with 11 points. That puts him over 1,000 for his career, both at Boston College and Providence. And that's McLaughlin. You know, this, the pace of this game, I, I think it really, you know, BC has fallen into it very nicely. Of course, you get a great nine-point cushion early with three threes from post. But they look pretty comfortable offensively. Seven made threes for the Eagles, six made for Notre Dame. Five of those from Leshesky. Shot clock winding down. Final 30 seconds. Good win. Bickerstaff, top rebounder for the Eagles, had the position. And I think with Post now, one of the things with Leshesky shooting, that they've had to go smaller with him and have a guy who can defend him out on the perimeter. Could be the Eagles with the final possession of the first half. They've got the lead right now. But Lockton comes up short. Leshesky grabs it. Might be a last-second chance. Goodwin couldn't handle the pass. It goes out of bounds, and Boston College will go to the locker room with the one-point lead, 36-35, after making seven threes in the first half. And again, this is after BC missed all six of its three-point tries on Tuesday. Billion. They will certainly miss Coach Bray making the announcement earlier this week that this year will be his last 23 years as the head coach of the Irish. And right now, Staring down a one-point deficit against the visiting Boston College Eagles. And just about set to crank up the second 20 minutes. Tom and Mike from our broadcast position courtside. And Mike, you expect three-pointers from Notre Dame. Not so much for Boston College, <laughs> although two games ago they made nine against Wake Forest. No, I mean, it's been a fabulous shooting uh, first half for BC. I mean, this is, a, this is kind of what Notre Dame does. I yes. mean, they are an excellent offensive team, a very good shooting team. But, uh, you know, it, it'll be interesting to see how it continues in the, on the second half. Leshesky had five of those threes in the first half. Quinton Post leading scorer for Boston College. He came out firing with a few threes of his own. And B.C. finished the first 20 minutes on a 7-2 run to take the one-point lead. Well, and for, uh, for Notre Dame, uh, their freshman, J.J. Starling, has not scored in this game yet. And he's a double-figure guy. Ryan misses out of the corner, and Post has the rebound. First meeting between the teams early January in Chestnut Hill. Notre Dame built a 10-point lead. It did not hold up. The Eagles came back to win that game. In fact, that's the last victory for Boston College as they move through the month of January. Elite Bay spinning on the block, and a foul called. I guess, you know, not well, along with the uh, scoring, Tom, there's some good thing. Both uh, Post and Leshevsky are in, not in any foul trouble, but there you see the shooting, both of them even. And Notre Dame in that loss at BC only shot 40% from the field, BC 52%. But that 7 of 11 really gets your attention. The league Bay is at the free throw line for Boston College. Plus, the other thing that's an elite level, Tom, they've got 11 assists on 14 made field goals, and that's, that is spectacular offense. Boston College is a team, 69% from the free throw line. That is last in the ACC. It'll be one of two for a league Bay. Eagles won at 70-63 at Connie Forum on January 3rd against the Irish. They trailed at half in that game by four. Had a one-point lead after 20 minutes in this one on the road. But they did outscore Notre Dame by seven at the free throw line in that game. That's now eight rebounds for Quinton Post to go along with his 13 points. He's the leading scorer for BC. 
Leshevsky with 17 has the most for Notre Dame. And Leshevsky really honoring him out the three-point line now. He's right in his jersey. Shot clock is down to seven. DeMar Langford pumps up the jumper. And he's a guy, I mean, from range, he's only 15% from three, and uh, so you're going to go under the screen and test him a little bit, but BC has been making jumpers. Offensive foul against Wirtz of the Irish. Ashton Langford, his brother DeMar, just hit that jumper at the other end for his first two points of the game. Earl Grant's team played tough and physical against North Carolina, including this guy, Quentin Post. They came up short against the Tar Heels. They've got the lead against the Irish. That was some up and under, and he has got great length and came up on the other side of the basket. Mike Bray wants an early timeout with his six-point lead. How about Quentin Post? He's up to 15 points after the move on the inside. Mike Bray calls a timeout, and the Eagles are in front by six. 41-35 is the lead for the Eagles on campus with 18.06 to go on a Saturday in the ACC, and Quinton Post leading the way for Boston College. The Eagles trying to get their first win here at Notre Dame since 2019 when they won it by a point, 73-72. Had lost 11 in a row prior to the win here in 2019 at Purcell Pavilion at the Joyce Center. Interesting. They've got Alibe, Alibe on Leshevsky now. Got a smaller guy to get him, to stay with him out on the perimeter. And Lubin is uh, matched up against Post. Ryan misses. Lubin feeds it back to Ryan. Wurtz posts the board on the weak side. Langford in traffic. That, that's who they are and have been this season, Tom. 60% of their offense comes from two from the two-point range. But they are really good at attacking the basket. Goodwin's three was halfway down and popped out. Entry to post and a foul called Works was defending post and giving up some size. On that pick and roll, they got caught in the switch and that was a good find on that mismatch. Second on Wirtz. You see the uh, the doubles actually slipped the screen right, at, at, you know, that time. And uh, late coming over for help. Last season, the teams played here, Mike, in February. An OT win for the Irish, 99-95. Zachary straight away. That bounces out. Post, Leshevsky, and Goodwin grabs it for the Irish. For Post, he's so long, you have to box him out a few feet away from the rim, and Notre Dame did well to come away with that board. Goodwin at 6'6", averages almost five rebounds per game. And now Lubin against Post has to give it up to Wirtz. Hammond, front rim, got his own miss. Preserving the possession. Goodwin with the shot clock at 10. Poked away from Lubin, but a foul against BC. Quentin Post that time, and just because Lubin really worked hard to get position and forced the, the cheap foul. Another guy's been quiet, Thomas Hammond. He's been really scoring 18 plus points in his last two. That was a deflected shot. Boston College looking for a field goal make in the second half, and that's Langford flying down the lane, and he got bumped. The eight-point lead, the largest for the Eagles 
in the game. Makai Ashton Lankford, brother Damar Lankford Jr., the younger brother. Damar is going to the free throw line. How about these young guys? Yeah, it's, it's pretty much not, life hasn't changed a whole <laughs> lot for them, has it? Just a little bit older now. They're still together. From Worcester, Massachusetts, the central part of the state. You know anybody else from Worcester? I do. I know a lot of people from Worcester. <laughs> <laughs> Most of my family's still back there in <laughs> Central Mass, and representing Worcester quite well in Chestnut Hill. As are you. Trying my best and leaning on the G-man, as I always do. Great to have you with us for ACC basketball as we steamroll through the season. Amazing coming up to the halfway point already. 20-game schedule in the ACC for the conference schedule. Quick ball movement by the Irish. We talked about the three-point shooting as a foul is committed. Notre Dame has missed its last nine three-point attempts. Trying to get the rhythm back for the Irish against the Eagles here at Purcell Pavilion. The game 45-35. Quinton Post has a double-double with his 15 points and 10 boards. And the Eagles on the road. Strong in the second half. Coming out of the locker room, G-Man. It's part of our Coyote Tractor turning point. Yeah, really, uh, we're comfortable right from the start in this game and continue to do that. Their shooting has been terrific. They've done a lot more attacking the basket in this half top, not relying on the three-point shot. Mike Bray uh, trying to figure things out on the sideline over there with a 10-point deficit. And that'll tell you the second-half story pretty easily. The Irish have not scored. And again, Earl Grant's team out to their largest lead of the game after leading by one at halftime, 36-35 for their second-year head coach. Well, and, you know, Leshevsky was so hot in the first half that the Notre Dame needs to find a second and a third scorer in this game. Nobody stepped up to find any rhythm. Six of 19 on three-pointers for the Irish and another miss. That's Wirtz. Really struggling now, Mike, at 37% shooting for the game for Notre Dame. Yeah, and Lachesky has five of those made threes. Wow. Up the ladder for DeMar Langford. Able to tip it in. What an athletic play. And uh, that's uh, where that pass was. That's the best he could have hoped for. Eight points now for Langford. BC is at 51% shooting for the game. Increasing its lead, which is I'd say 52 percent in that first game, poked away. Ashton Langford trying to beat two defenders over Starling, trying to calculate that angle off the backboard, and he was fouled. Well, actually, you know, BC has been—they've been able willing to push the ball up the floor, given the opportunity here, and they got the steal out front. So on turnovers, they're going to be. Opportunistic. That's a good take. Kai Ashton Lankford at the free throw line. Uh, we have a moment. Let's get a message from Coyote Tractor. In my experience, if you work the land, you got to be a jack of all trades. You got to have a little bit of optimism and a whole lot of get go. Kai Ashton Lankford at the free throw line, 84% on the season. Part of that brother duo from Worcester Mass. And he's able to convert from the free throw line. And not only the three point line, but now free throws in the second half are starting to be a factor for the Eagles. They work it around a good win in the corner. And that bounces out. You are not going to get a more wide open three than that one, Mike. No, and then, you know, then beating Notre Dame getting not much inside of a little good steal. Let's see if this leads to something. Ryan, his teammates trying to join him, trying to do it himself. And once again, just not getting the bounces. That one halfway down and could have been a chance at a three point play for Cormac Ryan. Here's the look of a little lazy pass, but uh, Ryan anticipating it well. Nobody really stopping the ball. So he's trying to make something happen, and just Goodwin's had a couple of jumpers go down as well, but uh, it has been very tough for Notre Dame to score. And still is. 
He's 83% on the year. Notre Dame is a good free throw shooting team. Fourth in the conference for the entire body of work on the season. 76% and Ryan breaks through. And he'll get some applause for the first point of the second half for the Irish. Maybe a made free throw is what they need. And try to climb back into this one. Post from Ashton Langford. Steamrolled the defender. Leshewski with a position, offensive foul. Third personal foul on post, but a nice job by Leshewski on the dribble, moving his feet, getting in position. Good call. So as Mike mentioned, third personal for post, leads the team with 15 points. Now, even with that, a little pressure up the floor by BC. Try to do this, nothing to try to steal the ball, just trying to take some time off the clock. 0 of 9 from the floor this half for Notre Dame. And the thing is, you know, outside of a that layup on the break or attempted layup, everything has been jump shots for Notre Dame. For Mac Ryan. He hits a three. Yeah, he's starting to come away, and you know, it. Four points for him in the last couple of possessions. Seven made threes in the game for the Irish. In the first, Cormac Ryan in six points. And a steal. Yeah, Ryan with the deflection. Starling, by the way, Mike, the freshman, has not scored in the game. Good win inside, and Madsen tied him up and picked up the foul. But you know what, Tom, to, to Starling's credit, a freshman who comes in after double figures might get a little antsy if he hasn't scored at this point, but he's really working within the frame of the offense. I like that. You know, letting things come to him where they can. Now he's third among freshman scorers in the ACC, over 12 points per game with Goodwin at the free throw line. Wow. 86% free throw shooter. Starling has missed all three of his shot opportunities, Mike. And he scored 16 points in the loss at BC in early January. Two missed free throws for Goodman. Two of six as a team. Once again, Goodwin, 86% from the line. It's Bickerstaff at the other end. Yeah, with Post out, a little bit different look offensively, and he does a nice job moving without the ball. Leshewski catch and release, and it's another three, his sixth of the game. First basket of the second half. They'll see if that ignites some offense from him. And that's with a smaller team out there. In theory, should be able to cover him from three. They're just late. Aston Langford missed. Good win the rebound. Leshewski has 20 points to lead the way for the Irish. Fifth time this season. Number 14 in white has scored 20 or more in a game. Ryan crosses it over against Bickerstaff. McLaughlin, rather. Bickerstaff threw a good one to the floor. Scored the basket as well. Nate Leshewski made three for him. Just like that. I mean, this, you know, it, making shots are capable. It's a dangerous team. Ties a career high with his seventh made three time. And this, they really work to get him. And uh, even Zachary with the challenge. And you see on the uh, on the weak side, Bickerstaff getting the foul. Last year, Leshewski made seven threes at North Carolina. And we have returned to normal. Good one at the free throw line. It's good. Well, and where neither team got into the bonus in the first half, Notre Dame's going to be shooting for the rest of this half, and uh, BC is close. So what seems like just a moment ago, Boston College led by 14. Here comes the Irish. Somebody removed the cellophane from the uh, <laughs> basket in front you know, of the Notre Dame bench. Maybe it was that... One free throw by Cormac Ryan just to get him on the board in the second half. Madsen on target with a three ball. 
Really good answer on that uh, to stop the drive. Prior to the Madsen make, it was an 8-0 run from Notre Dame. Foul coming up against Zachary for Boston College. So Lashevsky and his crew back in this one, 54-47. Your local Ford dealer. And by the Fresh Market, voted number one best supermarket in America. Mike Bray responsible for 13 of those trips to the NCAA tournament, a couple of Elite Eights in 2015 and 16, and the ACC tournament champs back in 2015. But you know what, and he said something interesting, though, in his uh, press conferences. It had only been one time in the last five years, I think, and that was last year, the NCAAs. And uh, I think that weighed in on him, weighed on the decision, talked about bringing a new voice in, energy. Um, but uh, what a marvelous legacy he leaves here. And just the, whatever he's done here, and as far as his record is concerned, just a better person. And I've been privileged to call him my friend for a long time, and he's been with me through thick and thin for sure. No question about it. I echo those sentiments. Leshesky leading his team without question with the seven three pointers. The rest of the team trying to keep up with Leshesky at the free throw line. So one more for Leshesky. He and his teammates have made their last three shots after missing 10 in a row prior to that, I'm trying to creep back into this one against the Eagles. Well, this is, I mean, still a lot, obviously, left in this game. But uh, remember we talked about Earl Grant saying, we're like 14, 15 attempts from three. That's where they are right now, but shooting a much higher percentage than they normally do. Let's see what they do the rest of the way. Eight made threes for BC, nine for the Irish. Especially against the zone defense that Notre Dame's using right now. Shot clock is at 10 for the Eagles looking for their first road victory away from Chestnut Hill this season Mackay Ashton Langford rattled around the rim and Leshevsky cradles it for the Irish as Mike mentioned coach Bray took this program to the NCAA tournament a season ago Hammond had a chance as it bounced off they made the first four last year Mike beat Rutgers in overtime and Alabama in the first round before losing to Texas Tech in the second round of the tournament. Yeah, and it was on that flight back that, uh, you know, those first thoughts, Mike Bray started to reflect on the year, and, you know, is this a good time to step aside and uh, decided to come back? But uh, that was a great take by him, and they had everybody lifted out. There was no chance for Post to, you know, to help inside. Hammond, the grad student, student from Queens, New York. 6-4 guard for Coach Bray and a transfer from Niagara. Six grad students on this squad, the most of any team in Division I. It is now a one-possession game after Hammond's first free throws of the game. Notre Dame extending out a little bit defensively. Trying to disrupt BC a little bit. That zone is lifted out a little bit higher. Defender fell down. Post made his way to the bucket. Foul call comes from Jamel Spearman. Dane Goodwin on that, uh, on the foul. Here's the look, and uh, that was, uh, that, that could have gone the other way easily with Post. First free throws for Post in the game as well. What are the chances your last name is Post and you're a Post player? <laughs> I mean, and you're accomplished. You're, you're. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you're you're pretty much locked into the I position mean, you're going to play. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's like if you name Jeeves <laughs> yeah. as a Butler. Well, you know, I mean, you know, it happens. It happens. Goodwin from the corner, and he hits a three. Well, it's been other guys finally stepping up. Cormac Ryan, Dave Goodwin joining the scoring party. Now it's just a two-point game and ten made threes in the game for the Irish. After the slow start in the second half, Hammond up ahead. This is Ryan. Feeds it to Leshesky who let the defender go. Ryan from the corner. Earl Grant, we're going to let his team 
play through. Ryan giving the Irish the one-point advantage. Halfway through the second half, backed away from Post. Great hands like Goodwin. Boy, just a completely different Notre Dame team offensively. Very active. Crowd in disbelief that Leshevsky <laughs> missed. <laughs> Leshevsky has tied his career high with seven made threes. Bickerstaff turn around. You know, you, you can't, and I'll, I'm going back to your comment about post, you can't what if, but boy, this team with him healthy from the start of the year, different story, I think. Missed the first 13 games with a foot injury. A factor against North Carolina on Tuesday with his 17 points and five rebounds. Leshesky the cutter. Score the basket. No, offensive no. foul. Offensive foul. A.J. Desai was right there. Mike Bray is apoplectic on the sideline. Tough call. I mean, if you if you get there and you you establish defensive position, that was really really close. That Irish bench can't believe it. The officials were talking. Jamie Lucky and AJ Desai were discussing it, and the foul will be against Leshevsky. Well, the thing was, it looked like he had started to fall down already, which is, you know, it should have been a block there. He was, he was anticipating taking that. Watch him; he's starting to go backwards, right, right at this point. Whether Ashton Lankford was in position is one point of contention. He did well though to get outside of the restricted yeah. area. And then, I commend him for taking one of the team. Absolutely. had a full head of steam going into the rim. It's a one-point game. BC throws it away. Well, you want to stay tuned for the fast break. It's presented by your local Ford dealer, and that's coming up. We'll talk a little bit more about Coach Bray announcing this year would be his last on that Irish bench. 11th BC turnover, 10 for Notre Dame, so they're about equal there. Starling spinning and scoring on the baseline. First basket, and he was very aggressive that time going to the baseline. And giving Notre Dame the one point lead. Back and forth we go. BC led by as many as 14 points here in this second half. Irish has battled its way back into this one. Lankford the turnaround, and he makes. I like him in the middle of the zone. They had a leak bay there early this year. I like him, too, uh, as a guy to get in and make things happen. They both have a nice jump shot from about 10 feet. Lankford hit double digits with 10 points after that jumper. Leak bay with Lashevsky. Now they got the switch. Ryan fires away and post adds another one to his rebounding total. He's got the double double this afternoon, first of the year. Just his seventh game of action. Langford cut off by Lashevsky. A league bay. A league bay. Knocking it down from the three point atmosphere right in front of his own bench. And that was his first made field goal of the game. And uh, they, you know what? They, they like for him, Tom, to build inside out. But uh, he looked pretty comfortable on that three. BC is tied at season high of nine made threes in a game. Cormac Ryan. Punch and counter punch. Really nice feed. They got the butt touch inside to Leshevsky and the good kick out to Ryan. So Cormac Ryan hits the 12th three of the game for the Irish. And it's a one-point Eagle lead. BC by one on the road here at Purcell Pavilion. A very slow start to the second half of the Irish. They did not score a single point in about the first five minutes of this second half. but. 
They have broken through since and erased the 14 point second half lead for Boston College. And the other thing too, Tom, is they've gotten to the free throw line, which uh, you know what you said it on that one uh, the one made free throw, and that really was a spark for them. It was Cormac Ryan, and then they followed it up with a barrage of threes. Earl Grant's team has made nine. Notre Dame has made 12. Cormac Ryan, by the way, we've got two players who went over a thousand points in their career today. Mackay Ashton Lankford for Boston College, number 11, and number five for the Irish, Cormac Ryan. Between here and Stanford for Cormac Ryan. Zachary, nowhere to go. Shot clock at 10 for BC. Post three pointer. You know, I was just going to say, you know, Notre Dame is really going to test that three point shooting here in the last minutes of this game, but four for four from three. A season high 10 made threes for Boston College. Driving to the basket, Hammond. DC by two inside of six minutes to go in regulation. Post was double teamed. It didn't stop him. Tell you what, he's shown the ability to. I mean, he did have a charge, but he is not bad off of the dribble. Lasheski is really crowding him out on the perimeter, so he just went inside. 22 points for Post. Foul committed by the Eagles. That's going to be on Jaden Zachary. Zachary's been a little quiet in this game for BC, Mike, with just the two points. And that's his fourth personal foul, too. But, uh, you know, the other thing, it, only three field goal attempts, so he really hasn't been hunting his offense. He's been letting other people step up and score. He was the leading scorer for BC in that meeting in January. Earlier this month, at, on January 3rd, and that was at County Forum. Zachary had 18 points to lead the Eagles. Lachewski at the line. So Zachary out, Madsen in. Madsen has eight points for Boston College. Lachewski can get point number 27 right here. So far you've got you know, Ashton Langford, Post, and Madsen have all multiple threes in this game. So they've got a few weapons out there. So Lashesky right now with 27 points. Post. Short on the first attempt, second time it's in. You know what's good about that? He never brought the ball down. He kept it up high, used his sight, never brought the guards into play, and got it up quickly. Tying his career high with 24 points for Clinton Post for BC and up by four. Goodwin elevates and hits. He just looks so good in his setup. Uh, I mean, he really gets his feet squared away and it's just an easy, easy motion. One of the best shooters in the ACC at 46% for Goodwin. Ashton Lankford carving his way. Up and under move, and he spun it off the glass. A little English from Ashton Lankford. How about a little bit going to the Celtics? How about a little Bob Cousy? Yeah. Dribbling inside and finishing. Love it. The Coos. Lashesky thought about the three. A league bay closed. Gave it to Goodwin. And that's as easy a shot as he's had in about 10 minutes. Goodwin now one of six on three-point tries. A little bit of frustration on the defensive end. I'll tell you what, with uh, Notre Dame's runs, BC has had an answer in this game. They've not shied away. Not in this instance. Missed from Ashton Lankford. For Mac Ryan trots it up and kicks. This is Wirtz. Over top of backboard and back to the Eagles. Wirtz still has not scored in this game, and it's a four-point deficit. For the Fighting Irish against the Eagles. He who leads everybody with 27. Now, normally, Tom, that you know, you would say, all right, that post is, you know, those three, those four made threes, though, if uh, those, you know,
no, that, that is normally not a part of uh, his scoring, <laughs> no. but he has been fabulous. And those three of them came in the first three shots of the game. Post had only made two threes all season prior to today. Nate Krzyzewski has tied his career high with the seven made threes and just one point off his career high of 28, which he's done twice. Notre Dame back in a man-to-man. -man. Three and a half minutes to go in regulation, roughly. Post just heaves it. Zachary the save, right to Starling. Too strong. Madsen was in the vicinity, and it looks like he's going to get the foul. Now, see, in, in that instance, I mean, you, you like the hustle, but Zachary should not have tried to save this. Watch this going out of bounds. I mean, this, this just starts the break, and uh, Starling in the right place at the right time. He's been aggressive, taking it to the rim. Sometimes you just... Uh, now, he did try to save it back in the direction of his basket but that's the first free throw attempt of the game for Starling and the first miss in eight tries yeah, just 61 percent of the year for him yeah Irish had made eight in a row before the miss from Starling 15 points for Ashton Lankford for Boston College second leading scorer today so Starling now with three points Three Irish players in double digits, also three Boston College Eagles in double digits in scoring today. Zachary trying to work against Starling. Got the shot away, and Starling committed the foul. Yeah, he bodied up, and you know, and he's got a size advantage against Zachary. He didn't have to pick up that foul, bit a little bit on the pump fake. But that was a pretty heady play by Zachary to draw the foul right here. See, he's got him in a good position. And uh, he made the he made the contact during those two free throws. Jaden Zachary, 82% from the free throw line on the season, his first free throw attempt. Sophomore from Salem, Wisconsin. He was big in the win in early January at 14 points in the final 10 minutes mm -hmm. as Boston College got the victory 70 63. Yeah, it's, uh, it's Notre Dame is going to have to come from behind in this game. They had a 10 point lead late in that game and gave up a 17 4 run. BC led by one at halftime by as many as 14 in this half. Leshevsky takes care of the defender. And he'll go to the free throw line. You know, and this is a couple of times now the referees have held the whistle on those guys trying to buy an offensive foul. You see, right, you get the, you get the mismatch right here. And Zachary tried it. And, uh, it was close, but no whistle on that. And, you know, the other thing they haven't called is any of the flopping, and that's five fouls on Zachary. So he leaves the game with four points. And unfortunately for BC now, he will be a spectator on that eagle bench. Yeah, that, that flopping is a technical foul, too. Comes with two free throws on the first call. So Leshevsky, one more free throw. That's now 12 of 17 as a team from the line for the Fighting Irish. And that is a career high for Leshevsky with the 28 points. How about his day, Mike? He's at 29 now. A new career high with the 29. How about 8 of 11, 7 of 9 from 3? Hasn't missed a free throw either. Score the basket for BC. Looking uh, nice post that time. No pun intended. That was a good call. Nobody stepping in front of him. I really, I, I really like his game. And now three for three from the free throw line for Post with the make. It's interesting. They're going to go a little offense for defense, too, pulling. And that is, 
A little counterintuitive, but pulling post out defensively so they can uh, be a little smaller and stay at home on Lefevsky. Usually see the offense for defense go the other way around. So Post is now up to 27 points. That's a new career high for him as he goes to the bench. But Lockton is in there for BC. Now Post will come back in. So Cormac Ryan's going to go to the free throw line for the Irish. It's awfully quiet in here when the Irish go to the free throw line. And, you know, I, I get it. I, I always like noise, even at home. You know, shooting like this is kind of, it's a little eerie, a little disconcerting. You can actually hear the Irish echoes <laughs> when it's so quiet. One of two for Ryan. Those, uh, those missed free throws by Notre Dame starting to loom a little larger. 14 of 20 from the line in the game for the Irish, trailing by five. Boston College has made eight of its last ten field goal attempts. Madsen. Game clock is at two minutes. Shot clock is at five. Ashton Lankford just pumps it up and makes it. A shot that he had to take because the shot climb, I mean, that possession was going nowhere. What a huge bailout. 18 points, Makai Ashton Lankford, and his fourth three of the game on eight tries. Hammond stutter step move, and the defender went down. That's DeMar Lankford, foul for BC. I mean, this is a shot because he has to. Look, there's not much going on. They didn't get much out of that pick and roll, and uh, he just rises up. So Hammond at the free throw line. Two for two so far today. Seven points. Irish leaving some points on the floor. Empty for Hammond. Post grabbed it and a foul was committed in the backcourt. And this is, you know, it, if you're looking at the game coming in, in theory should have been a huge edge for Notre Dame at the free throw line. They're one of the best shooting teams in the country from there. So Post is back at the free throw line for BC, where they are 11 of 13 as a team. Post hasn't missed. And he still hasn't with this one. Here's your upcoming schedule presented by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of North Carolina for the Eagles. Well, I mean, should they finish and close the deal here, it's going to be a huge confidence builder for this team going into the second half of the season. You get Louisville at home, which you know, looks like a winnable game, uh, you know, at, at this point. Then the uh, it picks up a little bit with Virginia and Clemson in the near term. But having that guy, Mr. Post, healthy is huge. He's got 29 points, and the Eagles have the ball back. Boston College lost at North Carolina on Tuesday, Mike, but I think they gained a lot of momentum from the effort for their game against the Tar Heels. The loss, 72 64. Notre Dame not fouling in this situation. A little reach in on Ashton Langford on the drive. So the lead is 10 right now. Let's take a look at today's Protecting the Paint. It's brought to you by CBI Security. As if Post hasn't done enough, he does it on the defensive end. Yeah, three blocks for the Eagles on the game. Uh, you know, like I said, shot blocking hasn't been a big part, but that was early in the first half. And uh, that's what having a seven-footer in there does for you. And, you know, some, there are media guides, seven-footers, Tom, and then there are legitimate, and he is all of seven feet. What a day for Quentin Post and the Eagles. 29 points, and Makai Ashton Lankford, his teammate at the free-throw line, 
can get it to an even 20 with this free throw. Went over 1,000 points in his career with his effort today for Makai Ashton Lankford with 20 points and 4 of 4 from the free throw line. Starling. His quiet afternoon continues. And now the final 50 seconds or so inside of Purcell Pavilion. It was really close in the second half, Mike, and it looks like BC is going to outlast the Irish in this instance. Well, and that's, you know, it, it's impressive that a team like this, you know, with a, a losing record, you know, we, they fought hard. You know, they, they fought hard down to Carolina, and uh, it's, it's carried over to here. I think they've, uh, Mr. Post is getting in game shape. That's the first miss from three-point distance for Post in the game. He had made four after making just two all season. Bickerstaff for deflection. And the Eagles are just going to dribble this one out. So Boston College has its first win here against the Irish in South Bend since December of 2019. Final count, Mike, 84-72. Earl Grant and the Eagles get their first road win of the season. And how about bouncing back 0 of 6 against North Carolina from 3, 11 of 19 in this game with just a terrific overall offensive performance. A season high for made threes by the Eagles with those 11. Notre Dame hit 12 three-pointers, but it was not enough. Leshevsky led the way with 29 points, a new career high for him. Once again, our final score, 8472 for Mike Jaminski and our outstanding ACC basketball production crew. I'm Tom Wormy. So long from Purcell Pavilion. It's the Eagles over the Irish. This is the ultimate easy entree. Our ultimate lump.